Welcome to Aorin channel and welcome back to Sheet Metal Cores. In the previous video, we looked at adding basic edge flanges, and in this one, we are going to look at them in more detail. They really are one of the workhorses of sheet metal, and we'll use them all the time. We are going to look at adding multiple edges, changing the width of our flanges, and a few more of those sub options. Open your part, and this was how we left it. We had this single base flange, this was 200 by 100 millimeters, and then we had this 90 degree edge flange. That was 50 millimeters high. So here in the design tree, we've got the single base flange and the single edge flange. And if we drag the rollback bar up, we can see the edge flange is taken out of the model. So we've just got the base flange there. Then if we drag back down, the edge flange is added again. The first thing we are going to look at is when we add our edge flanges, we don't have to add them one at a time. We can actually add multiple flanges using the same feature. Let's delete this edge flange. We could also just edit it by selecting the feature and pressing edit feature. But I'm going to delete it so we can show you the whole process from the beginning. Then select the edge flange tool again. Let's select the short edge again. Drag out the preview. And let's set the same size as before. So 90 degree angle and 50 mm flange length. Don't press OK yet though. Firstly, make sure we are in the edge selection box at the top here and then just select the other edges that we want such as this long edge here and then this one here press ok and now those flanges are added so we've got the makings of a box here now to edit the edge flange all we have to do is select it in the design tree and press edit feature the first thing that we are gonna have a look at is changing the angle here so if we increase the angle and I try something like 120 degrees we can see in these corners, the flanges have automatically been trimmed away, so they don't clash with each other. If we press OK to add flanges, we can see that a bit more clearly now. And if I flatten the bar by pressing flatten here on the toolbar, and we look from the top, we can see it's actually quite a strange shape there. The corners are 90 degrees, that's to stop them clashing with each other when the part is folded up. Now I'm going to edit the feature again and this time I'm going to change the angle down to 90 degrees and then just continue reducing it further we can see as the band moves outwards we get an increasing gap here so that trimming of the edges only occurs when the bands are moving towards each other not when they are moving apart like this Now let's set the angle back to 90 degrees and have a look at another option because we now have multiple flanges this option, the gap size has become available. This is the gap between the adjacent flanges. If we change this, if we want in this area here, as we increase the gap size, we can see the gap actually increases here in the corners. So it's actually trimming away the side of the flange there. You'll also see that if we only have one flange, so if I delete these two extra flanges, then that gap option gets grayed out. Because we can't have a gap if we've just got one single flange. But if we add a second flange again, now we've got the option again. The gap option will also be grayed out if the angle is less than 90 degrees. Because these two flanges are moving apart, we can't have a constant gap there using this option. But there is another way we can do that, and we'll look at that later in the course. I'm going to set the angle back to 90, and the gap back down to 1mm. Now we've covered all of these options here at the top, there are just a few more down here. The custom pen allowance and the custom relief type just override those settings that we set in the sheet metal folder and to be honest it's very rare that we have to change these usually we can just stick with the settings that cover our entire model above those here we've got two more options the first one is offset this just allows you to offset the pen away from the edge that we've selected so we can offset like this and we've got some different end conditions here and if we offset with multiple edges this gap in the corner is automatically filled in I'm just going to edit that again and remove the offset and the final option that we'll look at an edge flanges is this trim side bends option here this is a fairly specific option so I'll run through it quite quickly if I delete all of the edge flanges and then just add one small one on the end here I'm going to make it 90 degrees and 50 millimeters long 
like we had before and we want the material inside the band which is this one and I'm not going to select the trim side bands option so that's a very basic standard edge flange the trim side bands option will be used on the next flange just to demonstrate what it does I'm going to select the edge flange option again I'm going to add it to this long edge here and make it the same parameters as the first one so 90 degrees 50 millimeters so we haven't selected the trim side bands option on either of these flanges I'm going to press ok to add that flange and if you look in this corner here the band of this first flange kind of overlaps in this corner this isn't really ideal could potentially cause a manufacturing issue the good thing is we can use this trim side bands option to automatically trim away this area and hopefully get rid of any problems first we need to edit the add flange feature and then let's just go down and select trim side bands just put a check on the box and then press ok and now we can see we've just trimmed away that little section that was overlapping in the corner there the actual trim itself is automatic so we can either have it or not have it there's no adjustment of parameters needed in there if i press ctrl z now so we can go back to the other state we can see the difference there so what's in this area here i'm going to press undo now and we can see we've now got the overlapping problem area this covers pretty much of all the options within the edge flange tool but one last thing we are going to look at if we look at the length of our edge flanges at the moment they automatically run the entire length of the edge that we've selected and they are very square on the sides this isn't a very flexible approach because we might just want them to just run a short section of the edge to edit them is pretty easy really all we have to do is edit the flange feature so if we want to edit this long flange here just edit that feature in the feature tree and then here at the top just click this edge flange profile box Firstly, we'll get this message that says the sketch is valid. We can move that message out of the way. That just means that the sketch can be used to make this edge flange. And then we can adjust the underlying sketch to adjust the flange. It can be easiest to do this from a normal to view. So I'm going to select that. And then we can edit the underlying sketch and change the flange. So for example, we can drag the sides in like this. And the message here still says that the sketch is valid. So that means we can use it to make this edge flange as well as the length we can also adjust the height and then as is a good practice then as is good practice we can add some dimensions and when we are done we can press finish and we can see the edge flange has now been adjusted it doesn't run the entire length of the edge you might also notice that we've automatically got these little pen relief cuts at the sides and that's because the material is inside the pen if you don't see those it's probably just either that you've selected a slightly different type of pen or your pen relief options are a little bit different to mine and as usual we can flatten the bar if you need to and then we can fold it back up there is actually a slightly quicker way to edit these flange profiles all we need to do is expand the edge flange feature and then there should be a sketch under that feature if you've got multiple edge flanges then you'll have multiple sketches then we can just edit the sketch of the flange that we want to change this gives exactly the same result as the process that we just went through this way it's just a little bit quicker so we can now change the size of this flange and then just exit the sketch and we can see that's pulled through to the flange there we can also edit the actual profile of the flange and to do this let's edit that sketch again and then we can adjust this profile so we could add some holes in there or we could remove this vertical relation and maybe angle one of the edges like this add in some more dimensions And when we are done, we can exit the sketch and we can see the edge of the flange is no longer completely vertical. It follows the sketch that we just drew. So that covers edge flanges in quite a lot of detail. They are very common in sheet metal in SOLIDWORKS. Probably the most common feature that we'll use. To recap this video, I'm just going to edit one of the edge flanges like this one. We can select multiple edges by clicking in this box at the top and then choosing the edges. If you have adjacent edge flanges, we can adjust the cap here. If we change the angle so the flanges move towards each other, 
then the edges will automatically be cut to maintain that gap. But if we move them outwards, they won't be automatically extended. We can also use the trim side bends option to trim away the bottom corner where two edge flanges meet. And then finally we can adjust the edge flange profile itself by clicking this edit flange profile box. Or we can just directly adjust the sketches which are underneath the edge flange feature. If you have multiple flanges in the same feature, then you'll have that corresponds to each of those flanges. In the next video, we'll start looking at some more advanced sheet metal features. And the next one, we'll cover tabs and holes. So see you there. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like. I hope it can be a little helpful and useful.